Hello everyone, welcome. Today we're going to talk about a look back at some Xbox 360 exclusive. Again, remember, if it's multi-platform, whether on the PS3, the Wii, the PC, or whatever the hell else, and it's pretty much the same game with maybe a graphical difference, it's considered a multi-platform. So, you know, looking back at starting the, this, these videos with the PS3 video, I'm finding that it's really hard to think of stuff for the PS3 and the Xbox 360 that are all purely exclusive. A lot of stuff I liked was multi-platform, which really makes me think I'm going to make a really too big of a video on that. And looking at all the Xbox 360 stuff I had, I couldn't think of a shitload of standout exclusives. But I got some here, of course. So I want to start out with the first one. That's a casualty. Because it's... It's memory-based because it was an online game. And that was Chrome Hounds that Sega published. Uh, this was a really interesting game. Uh, basically, you could customize your own mech. And you joined a nation and fought a war to take over the entire nation for your country. So you would either fight bots or actual people and earn wards, medals, points, money and stuff and that. And continue the progression of your country and shit. And I think basically the war lasted a month. So, like, at the end of every month, based on, like, what's gone on in there, if somebody has not dominated the entire country, it resets or something like that. Or maybe it was all the way until somebody did conquer everything. It's, you know, it's been a long time uh, since the servers were closed. Uh, the single player on Chrome Hounds is basically just a giant tutorial of all the different type of mechs, you know, like a sniper and one on machine guns and different forms of combat, and is completely not worth even picking up this game. With the servers dead, um, this game's pretty cheap, I believe. Um, if you feel like it's, because it is interesting. But the single player doesn't offer any variety or anything, or customization. It's just really a giant tutorial for the multiplayer, and the servers are dead. So that's why I said uh, this is kind of a casualty, because, you know, the main idea is kind of give off games that I really think stood out, that maybe you didn't try and kind of look up, and, well, obviously... Can't really do that with Chrome Hounds, which is a shame, because I thought it was a really interesting game, and I'm trying to remember something. Um, I nimble, I think maybe it was Extra Quits. I was watching a video over there, and I don't know if it was Extra Quits, but we were watching a video, and somebody was talking about uh, why doesn't someone make a game like that, where you have like this like map where you're trying to take over shit in that. And I was like, well, it already existed. It was Chrome Hounds, and people didn't support it, sadly. So, uh, of course, uh, similar to my PS3 video, uh, if you weren't expecting this, then you either have not watched enough of my content, or you need to keep watching more content. <laughs> uh, Dead Rising 1, which was exclusive to the Xbox 360, and sadly, it's third game shares that fate on the Xbox One, which I hope won't be a permanent thing, I hope, but who knows. This is why I bought 360. Of course it would be a defining game. It it really introduced, in my opinion, the upgrade from the previous generation to the PS3 360 experience of graphics and power. And, of course, it was a survival game, you know? If there's anything people don't see, like, as a repeating thing between games that, like, survival and RPG are things that really interest me. And then, like, really weird stuff, kind of like in a third place there. And, you know, it's zombie apocalypse, tons of shield weapons. It was a really interesting idea that Keiju Fune had, though. 
And I can just only hope that Isaac Tweet continues that, but um, I still have some wimpy waves though. Now, love it, love it or hate it, love it or hate it, I don't think a lot of people can disagree that the first Gears of War was a really good game, and it definitely was a standout game when it came to third person shooters. Now, of course, uh, the fate of this being successful and good led it to saturated sequels, saturated clones, and shitloads of wall covering, shoot behind cover shit that is now oversaturated and shit. And like I said, I can understand uh, it being like, how could you pick Gears of War as a standout title? The original Gears of War stood out for its time. And it was obviously well made. And then, you know, you got sequels and hauling out DLC and shit. So, go show you the fate of time. And of course, it was cooperative. You know, that's always a great thing. Especially when it doesn't force you to have to get no copy, to get no console, and then connect to the internet. That's always a good feature. That's always a good feature. Isn't that white? Isn't that white? Operation Raccoon, why right? you gotta buy no copy in the system and bail get online if you wanna play that online, why right? you know that was a good idea, why right? it's stupid. That should be a very rare thing. But anyway, I digress. Now, of course, I realized, you know, I didn't really touch up on a lot of RPGs on the PS3. And I was kind of like, you know, it kind of made me wonder that, you know, I feel like there wasn't a lot of standout RPGs that were exclusive. Now, of course, I, I don't own Disguy 4 or 3... I've really fell behind on this guy, and I know D2 just came out. I mean, I've only played this guy 1, 2, and, um, what's it called, uh, Infinite on the PSP, which is basically a visual novel, uh, which actually did make me interested in, uh, this guy 3, because, uh, the characters that appear in there are really fucking weird, so... But uh, I heard a lot of people also talk about they kind of dislike it for that reason because they feel like it's trying to emulate the humor of the Force game. So, who the hell knows and you t-shirt behave. Anyway, now of course, uh, with that said, we have some exclusives. And uh, for the 360, of course, uh, some of them used to be exclusive, so they can't be on that li on this uh, particular video, sadly. But we still do have two that remained exclusives. And that was Lost Odyssey by Mistwalker, which was um, founded in... <clears throat> It was founded by the original Cradle of Final Fantasy. So, how could you go wrong? Uh, Lost Odyssey is awesome. Really long. And it was like, what, four discs? I think it was four discs. Uh, let's see. Yes, it was four discs. I have two of them in the little slide thing. And I got a double thing for uh, two of the discs here. I want to get another double thing. Uh, the reason it's like that is because... Um, the American versions, uh, they stacked them all up like PC games, and I hate that. And it pisses me off because Europe actually got uh, cases that had them all individually separated. <laughs> so that kind of pissed me off, but uh, that's a whole nother topic. Uh, Lost Odyssey has a really interesting story in that I never finished it, to be honest. And it's not because it was bad, it just... Getting older, job and stuff, you know, it's harder to sit down and devote a shitload of time to RPG. And, you know, then I started doing videos and stuff, and um, it's really something I do want to go, go back to in that and even do. And, of course, the other surprise is probably not going to be shocking, Blue Dragon, which was uh, three discs, if I remember quickly. Uh, which, again, uh, I have a spoiler in now and one... In a generic case over here. Yes, it was three. Uh, personally, I think Lost Aussie was a better RPG. Um, for 
how to put this? I think kind of modernizing it without making it shit. And Blue Dragon was more into t traditional. So if you're really into older style RPGs, I think Blue Dragon's better up your out. But if you want to get a little more modernized, more story, and more humanish graphics, you know, not anime cartoon look. The Lost Odyssey is a better thing. Uh, Blue Dragon. Blue Dragon was a good traditional RPG, which is something that is not common much anymore. Um, you're always seeing a lot of weird, crazy shit, which some of them are good, but I mean, um, I mean, look at Final Fantasy XIII. It, it, it's basically not a fucking normal Final Fantasy game. And, you know, I, I have my videos on my two cents about that and stuff. Uh, but Blue Dragon is a pretty awesome. It was very impressive when it came out, and it moved units in Japan, which, of course, was why Microsoft really, really was backing up Mistwalker at the time. Uh, sadly, I don't know what Mistwalker was really doing now. That's actually something I should look into. <sighs> it's really difficult, you know... It was really difficult for me to look at all the 360 games. I mean, I got all connect. Yeah. I got all this, and then I have a whole shelf underneath it that's full of 360 stuff. And then behind here, on the Blockbuster shelf I got, I have all the beaten 360 games I have. And really, it's really funny just looking at so many of them. A lot of the ones I would pick as recommendations that they're the multi-platform, like Alan Wake. I would totally throw Alan Wake in here if it was another PC. But anyway, that's some titles that I feel like stood out over time on the 360. Uh, I think it is has been really challenging to actually consider titles that were exclusives. So I definitely think that my multi-platform thing is going to be a very long talkative video. So I think the Wii U is going to be a lot easier because, you know, Nintendo's had pretty good exclusives, especially Force Party wise, for quite a long time, even though they've lacked third party support since the N64 and onward. But the few times they get, usually are still very exclusive-ish. So... Um, I'm sure the Wii is going to prove a lot easier probably to pick out stuff. Especially in the RPG department. I think that's, that's, you know, that's kind of like the funny irony. I, I, you know, I already know three fucking games that are all way going to make it. And two of them are fucking RPGs, you know what they are, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... I hope you look forward to the look back on the Wii console. And then we'll go on to the PSP and the DS, of course. Because, you know, the v Vita and 3DS have been out for a shitload of time. And eh, the PSP still living on in Japan, but it's pretty much dead in America, sadly. And I don't think anyone's really been releasing new DS titles, so... I don't know of anyone. I don't even know if they're releasing new DS titles in Japan. That's actually an interesting question. But, um, yeah. We'll get on to more videos. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And we'll see you next time. Where we blab on. Hopefully about a whole bunch of RPGs. Peace out. Love and peace. No. Got crossed fingers. Love and peace. What? It's, it's what Vash does. You know, Vash. You know, that guy right there. You know, bash the stampede. You know, you go. Love and peace.